All right, this is gross. I actually have to clean it with something. Hey, what's up, Planet Earth? This is your favorite soul daddy, Chris Rubin, bringing you an exclusive on the gravy. See, the gravy is like an heirloom of my family. It's been handed down generation to generation. So now I'm gonna hand it down to you. Let's get involved. Here's what you're gonna need. Two and a half pounds of onion, vegetable oil, browning seasoning, two pints of beef broth, a cup of cornstarch. You're gonna need beef, all kinds of beef. And to call your local Chinese place if you don't feel like making rice. Some corn, salted butter, and some sugar. My grandma taught me how to make the gravy. And if there's one thing she told me, it's you gotta start with a lot of onions. We're gonna cut these onions and we're gonna make them big. Let me show you how. I used to dice up the onions really small. They really just melt anyway. I'm actually gonna turn the fire on on this. So you wanna get it going at about a medium heat. Today we're doing a gravy that's for about four to six people. That should only take about three hours. We're about halfway through these onions. Oh no, here it comes. You match the weight of the onions to the meat. Otherwise it's gonna throw off your flavor balance. Soul food, it's emotional. It hurts so bad. And get a little oil in there, slick the rick. I don't know anything about cooking. So you just wanna break up the onions. We gotta cook them, we gotta brown them. I'm gonna do a little salt. My truck's kirkling with my heart. You can use sugar, you can use agave. I get the good shit. With the meat, it's simple. You just gotta cut it a little bit bigger than bite size because it's gonna fall apart. You don't wanna go for like fillets or anything because it's got no fat. Just leave that fat in there. You're all gonna die one day. Just enjoy some gravy. This steak especially shreds, but it provides a lot of richness to the gravy that you wouldn't get without a skirt steak. Back in the day, my grandma told me always use bouillon cubes for the beef broth. That's a little too salty, and the meat always needed a little more salt. I salt in the meat a little more. So these are starting to cook down a little bit. Now I'm gonna add the beef in just to brown it a little bit, and then put the broth in. We don't want any of that meat to really cook too much. Get it seared, have it say hello. Maybe give a kiss. You're about ready to get involved with the broth. What I have here are my limited edition Danny Dakota pint glasses. Oh, and that's just gorgeous. That's just beautiful. And you stir it around a little bit. But you just don't want to be afraid of it. You know, you want to embrace it fully. Boom, you see the brown? There's a little brown on that meat there. Absolutely gorgeous. Perfect pour, really. Excellent work. You don't want to completely submerge your food. So this is gonna simmer for a while. We're gonna come back every 20, 30 minutes for the next two hours to stir it around. So as you see, I'm leaving this open. Don't ever cover it. You want it to kind of boil out and evaporate. Starting to get it to bubble and foam up on the sides. Lower the heat a little bit. The meat's been in here for about 25 minutes now. It's growing period, life and all that. And so the most gravy I ever made it once was, I think it was like seven gallons. We were at a music festival playing with the band and a lot of our friends, I think like 50 people ate off of it. So let's go play with the dogs. It's beautiful outside. Hi, Boo Boo. I love you. Oh, <laughs> oh you talk. There you go. My man, my man. <laughs> Bit a hole in my shirt. <laughs> You can even see some of the meat starting to like want to spread apart already. Maybe in about an hour we'll thicken it up and darken it. Bubbling USA. Nothing fancy, but I'll show you how I do the corn. Fuck that. I'm not gonna make the corn until I'm ready to serve it. This gravy still needs more time. The thing about gravy is it's absolutely unpredictable. It's time to thicken up the gravy. Here's what we do. Take cornstarch, anywhere between a half a cup and a cup. I'm making a mess. Then you want to fork that up. Feels like wet cement at the bottom there, boy. Sludginess in there. I gotta add the kitchen bouquet. Now this you don't want to add too much of. And it's really all about finding that color. Maybe we have to do a little more. Whoop, look at that heartbeat. Eat me, daddy. This is in a state of perpetual bliss and now it's just got a simmer on low. You wanna turn that down. You don't want it to aggressively bubble at you. So now one half of the name says it all. I'm gonna show you how we do rice here. I'll just be a second. Can I get uh, three quarts of white rice? Thanks so much, have a great day. Booyah! It is pretty much rice and gravy, but there's one more thing that makes it just that much more special and it is the corn. 
Hey, what are you doing? Yeah, oh, what else I got for you, huh? So we got two cans of corn. We're gonna use two tablespoons of salted butter. This is every gravy pursuer's dream right here. Put together a bowl of it and show you guys how to eat. Just plop that shit. That's it, there she is. Will my grandma be proud? Oh yeah. Hopefully you'll be enjoying some gravy in no time. Leave a comment. I like everybody. Shout out to all the gravy babies out there. And shout out to the Chris Rubin Band. Stay tuned for more fun antics, food, and music. <clears throat> Thanks, y'all.